My two younger brothers were still in elementary school, so I woke up early, did the milk rounds, worked in a factory during the day, and went to school at night. My life was super busy then. My life became significantly easier after marriage. Since my wife did the housework, all I needed to do was work. Before, I was so busy that I never really got to have any fun. One day, a friend took me to a betting shop for horse racing. And to my surprise, I got lucky. I was surprised that you can buy a ticket and then you get all this money in your hands. So that's how it started. It gradually became worse, to the point that I would get off the night shift and go straight to the races. I loved gambling more than eating and sleeping. On my way home, images of my wife and children would come to my mind, and I had this nagging feeling that I really should be getting my life together. When I was broke, I would go to the pawn shops. I pawned our camera and even my wife's jewellery. My wife started studying the Bible, and to try and make my wife and children a little happy, I also agreed to a study. Before I started gambling, I liked growing vegetables. You know, everything a vegetable needs, all the instructions to grow, is in this tiny seed that is one or two millimeters in size. I knew that couldn't just happen by chance. I was convinced that there must be a God. Through my Bible study, I learned that this God is Jehovah, and that made me really happy. I found you. That's how I felt. However, it was really difficult to quit gambling. You know, many times I wanted to quit, and I would pay back my loans, but then take out some more again. My wife's relative said to me, only death can cure you. We're watching the testimony of a gentleman named Takei. This is from the November 2022 JW Broadcasting episode. It's a familiar trope. This same old story that gets regurgitated time and time again, where someone goes from leading some kind of debauched or errant lifestyle and then they become a Jehovah's Witness, and then everything magically gets better, or they feel that they have improved in some way or been able to get rid of this undesirable aspect of their lives. That's what we're dealing with again, I'm afraid. I did just want to zero in on two really interesting clips from this particular story, the first being this one. My life became significantly easier after marriage. Since my wife did the housework, all I needed to do was work. Was that really necessary? In order to tell Takei's story, did we really need to hear that part of the story and even have that part of the story reenacted? Let's remember how these testimonies are put together. It's not like Takei has sat down in front of the camera and every single word he has said about his life is now being played back for us. Typically what you would do is you would edit his story so that the most relevant parts are portrayed or are shown on camera. He may have been talking for an hour, two hours, three hours, who knows? It certainly wasn't just a few minutes, which is what it's been edited down to. And for some reason, 
the writers or the makers of JW Broadcasting have decided that this particular thing about his marriage making his life easier because his wife did all the housework, for some reason they've decided that that needs to make the cut and be reenacted. So I guess I'll let you draw your own conclusions, but to my eye, or from my perspective, this seems like more evidence that ultimately we're dealing with an extremely sexist patriarchal organisation that still got its mind somewhere in the 1950s, where women are the housekeepers and men are the earners. Then we have Takei giving this slam dunk argument for the existence of God. You know, everything a vegetable needs, all the instructions to grow, is in this tiny seed that is one or two millimeters in size. I knew that couldn't just happen by chance. Wow. Well, when you put it like that, Takei, <laughs> I'm completely flawed. I have no answer, neither do any scientists have any answer for that logic. Honestly, it's not, again, I've said this repeatedly, but maybe someone else needs to hear this. Evolution by natural selection is not blind chance. It has the illusion or the appearance of chance because it isn't being directed by any known intelligence, but it's very much cause and effect. So when it comes to the way seeds have evolved, they have evolved in a particular way so that a plant can grow and shed more seeds before it withers and dies. That's how natural selection works. The size, quite frankly, is irrelevant. Two millimetres to take is vast, is a huge boulder to an ant, <laughs> and it's even bigger if you're a microbe or a bacterium. You know, what's the size got to do with anything? According to Takei, if you can make something small and relatively complex compared to, say, a pumpkin <laughs> or a house, if it can be squashed down to a size that Takei considers very, very small, then it's suitably complicated for it to no longer be attributable to natural selection or to, as he puts it, chance. I'm sorry, I don't find that convincing. And I would submit that perhaps Takei needs to study evolution a little bit more and understand how it works before he gives us such rubbish arguments against it. I attended a circuit assembly for the first time. Put away the old personality and put on the new personality. As I was reading those words from the Bible, I felt that was about me. When I asked myself, hey, what's happening to my life right now? I saw how horrible and ugly my mindset was. I felt tears well up. I knew this was Jehovah talking to me, and I felt determined to do something about it. I couldn't do it on my own, so I prayed to Jehovah from the bottom of my heart, saying, I really want to stop, no matter what. I want to hate gambling and not just avoid it. Please give me this feeling of hate. I prayed like this every day. Since then, I have felt zero desire to gamble. Good for you, Take. I'm glad to hear that. You seem like a genuinely nice guy. Gambling is a horrible cycle to get stuck in. It's a, a terrible way of 
draining your resources, your family's resources, and leading you to depression and mental health issues. And so for you to break free from gambling is genuinely fantastic, and I'm thrilled for you. I just think you could have done it without joining a cult. And I think lots of people are able to break free from all manner of addictions without doing so with the help of groups like Jehovah's Witnesses. All that's effectively happening is one dependency is being replaced with another. That's what's happened here. He was dependent previously on gambling for his highs and for his feelings of self-worth. And he learned through a process of indoctrination to switch it so that he instead got those highs and those feelings of self-worth from, from an organization, from, as it turns out, quite a harmful, abusive, apocalyptic organization. So are there more healthy ways to stop gambling? Definitely. And I wish you had pursued those ways instead. But I guess whatever gets you through the week, Take, um, I'm not in a position to know to what extent the Jehovah's Witness organization is negatively impacting Take's life. It's certainly stripping him of critical thinking skills, as we saw with his arguments against evolution. It's certainly a group that seeks to control Take and micromanage his decisions that he makes in his everyday life. But is it worth it in order to not be constantly in debt and dealing with gambling addiction? I don't know. That's for him to decide. But for everyone else who's watching, let me be blunt. This is not how you get over gambling. This is not how you get over any addiction. And if you needed any proof, here it is. Put away the old personality and put on the new personality. As I was reading those words from the Bible, I felt that was about me. Put away the old personality and put on the new personality. Become a different person person. That's what you need to do when you join Jehovah's Witnesses. Because before you join Jehovah's Witnesses, there's something wrong with who you are as a person. And now Take has joined Jehovah's Witnesses, not only is he free from the desire to gamble to the point where he said he hates gambling, He's also got a little bit of baggage in the form of a devotion to eight dudes in New York who he believes are a channel between God and mankind who he believes have the right to control his life. Quite a bit of baggage there, isn't it? Really, is it healthy for any organization to insist that you change who you are as a person? Not just in terms of getting rid of undesirable dependencies such as gambling or alcoholism or being addicted to nicotine, you name it, drugs, whatever, but in other areas, areas that benefit the organization. Areas that give the organization power over you. This, again, is just the same old trope, I'm afraid, that we've seen repeated time and time again. Yes, there are things in life that people can get involved in that are inadvisable, that would do them harm. And it just so happens that Jehovah's Witnesses are one of many religions that frown on many of those things. But you should never, ever look to Jehovah's Witnesses as the cure. This is an organization that will always be more interested 
in controlling you than curing you.